So I'm going to go through a couple things. Um, first one I want to actually address a little bit real fast is actually the uh, kind of news you guys heard probably here was it the last couple of days. Um, so Brocades intend to actually acquire uh, Steel App um, from Riverbed. So I just want to kind of go a little bit high level as far as you know what that means to us and why kind of its relevancy to us. And I'm going to jump into um, talk about two specific use cases um, that seem to be getting high amount of traction amongst either our NetIron product line and some uh, security related type of architectures they want to um, be brought into, as well as the, the vRouter actually being brought into that as well and kind of building a uh, kind of combined solution between uh, NetIron MLX as well as the Viata virtual router and a data center specific use case with respect to virtualization and some segmentation and such. So um, obviously you guys heard, um, you know, we said, hey, we're going to buy somebody. Um, and so we announced uh, an intent uh, to purchase a steel app from Riverbed, um, which is basically their virtual application delivery controller, right? So their uh, virtual load balancer. Um, <clears throat> the rationale behind it and the reason why we want to do it, of course, um, or, or um, you know, why it was very attractive to us is that it actually... Uh, brings us immediately into um, uh, various different types of markets that we actually haven't been uh, very strong in with respects to ADC, um, which is primarily within um, uh, you know, the enterprise space with the, as it relates to our virtual product lines, right? So everything that comes underneath the software business unit, which is the virtual router, which is the controller, um, our traditional virtual ADX, and then obviously now um, this potential new product here that after everything comes to a close. Um, and obviously, we're very much very loud about talking about NFE and virtualization and, and kind of like our overall strategy behind that with the virtual router being the kind of um, the, the leading product from us at the current moment with respect to kind of entering into that space and a lot of our engagements. And so bringing in this little bit more comprehensive kind of a solution with respect to uh, a different level of service kind of complements our portfolio and kind of just rounds it out a little bit more. And it, and it very much just enhances our ability to kind of deliver a variety of different services as in uh, respects to NFE, if you will. Um, you know, obviously for us, it's very, uh, there's a lot of synergy associated to it, right? There's, there's no mix, there's no differences with respect to types of customers we want to go after, whether it's in the cloud, whether it's in the telco, whether it's in the enterprise. And, and the beauty about this intention of ours is that it actually gives us a very strong foothold within enterprise data centers with respect to their presence within SteelHap, as well as within the cloud in them itself. And, um, and, you know, add that to our current presence that's uh, continuously growing with a variety of number of public cloud providers like SoftLayer or Amazon, if you will. Um, it just, uh, it just broadens our overall presence and then now actually allows us to put together a very um, uh, nice combined solution with having a load balancer plus a multi-function like type of virtual, um, op uh, virtual appliance to actually be placed in the cloud for a variety of different types of use cases and, and such like that. Any questions at all? Um, so now our portfolio, um, I know the slide's not that pretty, if you will, kind of weird color as far as the purple's concerned, but um, you know, obviously the insertion point here is, is, is the fact that Steel App is actually going to live alongside our existing virtual uh, ADX and basically just going to complement that and address very special types of use cases and the different types of customers, whether it's with respects to performance, scale, or uh, um, cloud versus um, um, some things that the ADX is actually just a little bit more, um, more optimized for. So the ADX today is obviously highly synergetic to, um, or highly optimized for performance. And uh, the Steel app obviously, of course, potentially has a little bit more robustness, if you will, to address more enterprise-like type of functionality. Any questions? You guys are quiet. I have a question on the previous slide, I guess. I'll ask it. <clears throat> so number two in DC networking vendors, what, what, what metrics is, is that based on? What numbers? Um, I wish I knew. Uh, our, our bullet as us as a company overall worldwide, um, you know, we're number two in data center networking. Well, so to uh, basically voice uh, Mr. Wolpen's uh, comment there, so it's from IDC. Um, and it takes a combination from our IP presence within data centers as well as our fiber channel presence, right? So collectively together. Much, yeah, okay. Yeah, right. Just wanted so, to make sure that's what, yeah. okay. Any other questions? Okay, so um, what I want to talk about a little bit is about secure hybrid cloud, something that's um, uh, something that we're wanting to push, um, as well as something that's kind of been adopted for quite a while with respects to, say, the virtual router and its presence in SoftLayer and Amazon and, and other cloud providers. Um, 
So recently here, of course, the uh, NetIron MLXE product line has uh, added a, a great new functionality with respects to uh, having an IPsec module, um, which is obviously going to be centered around um, um, creating uh, secure connectivity, um, either inside of the data center, intra data center, if you will, um, with uh, high levels of performance and such, and, and a high level of um, um, security capability with respects to some compliances like Sweet B, if you will. Um, so when we look at the, the, the overall um, kind of end to end architecture, so to speak, um, you know, we're, we're looking at you know, utilizing hardware based types of uh, encryption to secure. Um, Intrasite connectivity, uh, if you will, for intradata centers utilizing the MLXEs, but then obviously, of course, we recognize customers are wanting to obviously go to the cloud a little bit more. And so from there, we're um, you know, combining a, a solution between the virtual router as well as with the MLX to actually allow either to um, you know, provide secure connectivity into a cloud, whether it's in the public sense, so using the virtual router as a secure gateway, um, utilizing VPN capabilities there, or actually um, leveraging and working with various different system integrators worldwide that are building kind of like this private modular cloud kind of a concept uh, where they're going in and, and helping enterprises build these private clouds and they're using the virtual router as kind of like the secure um, gateway endpoint, you know, or entry point into it. Um, Moving along, um, you know, as we kind of uh, look at how we want to make the solution a little bit more robust combined together, obviously you see BVC or the uh, Brocavi out of controller and, and, you know, there's some uh, opportunities here for some applications to kind of help ease the pain with respects to building up tunnels between a variety of different uh, security endpoints or even potentially even multiple different types of vendors. Um, so, you know, depicting here the uh, Viata controller with the ability to uh, be able to touch and program, obviously, brocade elements, um, but it doesn't preclude it from actually touching, of course, any other kind of vendors. Um, and the idea here is to um, potentially look at applications that might leverage the, the program programmability of the controller to um, very easily and automate building up of secure tunnels between either the MLXE, if you will, to a virtual router and then kind of binding that over into the cloud space. Any other questions? How would you configure the virtual router from the controller? Would it be NetConf or something else? So today it would be NetConf um, using Yang. Yes, it would. So um, the virtual router also does support a native REST API um, outbound um, or on its north side um, in case it actually wants to communicate to a different set of apps, if you will. But with BBC, it's, it's primarily via NetConf and Yang. Okay. And, and um, you know, obviously on that note, kind of uh, piggyback on that, you know, the, the depiction here with BVC and the virtual router in the cloud space isn't really necessarily using BVC at this moment to kind of um, use it to program a, a virtual router in the public cloud, but really more so within the private cloud, if you will, right? Something that's being controlled by the enterprise as their own kind of asset. Any questions with respect to that at all? I think it's fairly straightforward. Um, you know, the big opportunity there is that, that we're looking into is obviously on the application side to kind of really ease the, auto, the, the, the bringing up of various different tunnels and multiple kind of devices and, and um, um, vendors potentially. So with this one here, um, I actually want to talk about, um, you know, the concept of kind of like a virtual tour. Um, obviously, it's not as colorful as the other one without the kind of cool icon, so it's fairly basic, if you will, just boxes. Um, but you know, the value that, that we're positioning the virtual router here for um, data center virtualization is to um, have a higher level network-based intelligence being jammed up inside of the compute node where all the other virtual machines are at. And the idea here is, well, though, you know, of course, I'm depicting a, a uh, lovely top to bottom brocade architecture, and of course, using our Ethernet fabric products and things of that nature, but, um, you know, within the data center, these are all you have a variety of different capabilities. They could be layer two top of racks, they could be layer three top of racks, and they could provide some sort of routing functionality. But um, some of the engagements that we're having and, and like the uh, different types of customers we're talking with is um, spe specifically within the managed type of IT type of a space, they're having challenges with actually working with their, their own uh, providers with respects to actually control and access um, as it relates to where the DMARC line is at. And so they have issues with change control. They need to add more, more assets within the compute node that might be what they're managing, having to communicate to a provider of sorts, and then uh, the long lead times to actually get change actually done is actually kind of hindering their business. So what they're looking at and they're actually deploying now is um, utilizing the virtual router to kind of move their DMARC point um, where they actually want to provide all their routing capabilities and security directly into the compute node in and of itself, um, just giving a lot more flexibility. Other use cases that they're using the virtual router for within this kind of concept of a virtual tour of well is to um, actually provide security inside the actual compute in and of itself, right? And so now you can actually have a high throughput um, software-based firewall 
actually directly in the, the actual server or compute node itself, which clearly is not going to be a capability that you find within the, when a particular top of rack or a leaf node, right? And so now you're actually just enhancing the overall data center network with uh, um, extra levels of security. Um, also as well within this, um, you know, the virtual router being a, a secure gateway from VPN capabilities, um, the RI thing having customers that are um, in some of the managed, uh, managed space actually using this to provide VPN connectivity through um, this particular data center architecture through their own uh, various different branch offices or even their headquarters, if you will. Any questions? Really straightforward. You guys are quiet. Yeah. Hmm. Um, we're plotting. Oh, we came in after lunch. Uh, there you go. We're plotting um, how we're going to set all of this up and make it all happen. Mm. Yeah, I'm that's where BBC comes into play. How am I going to do this? Yeah, yeah really. Well, that's exactly what's going through my head is all the homework I have now. Oh yeah, <laughs> test and play with all this mm -hmm. and everything. It's, oh my, it's, I'm yeah. thinking, how can I allocate this and get it on here with the yeah, other yeah, thing so I can actually work with this? Exactly. Pretty sweet. I can just. Yeah. Somebody's going to show me how to get your controller in my mini net lab, but I'll figure that out, I'm sure. I just defer any kind of, uh, you know, difficulties with trying to spin it up and configure it, and I just kind of punt that over to the controller and kind of say the controller is going to kind of answer all my problems, if you will, for like, you know, network management and such. It's not an accurate statement to say, right, but I like punting it over there, so. Um, Beata, what is the tallest mountain in the world? <laughs> Um, you know, obviously the virtual router is available for free trial downloads, so you guys can install, you guys know about that, you can put it on your laptops or what have you and things of that nature. So, 